even at the height of its popularity, the immersive sim genre has never been particularly popular. Games such as System Shock, Thief, and Deus Ex hold reverence in this industry to a great many creators and are responsible for lots of innovation with regards to 3D technology, but outside of a feverishly devoted online following, these titles have never been massive sellers. The closest we ever came to the genre breaking into the mainstream was with Bioshock, which stripped things back enough for console users to become approachable without requiring a master's degree in physics to understand. Up front, you should know that Sonar Shock is 100% old school MSIM. If you got into these games because of Bioshock, you will likely find this latest indie title incredibly off putting. If you cut your teeth on Looking Glass Studios' output, however, Sonar Shock will feel like some long lost relic that never got the respect it deserved. Directly inspired by the original System Shock, and even bearing the Shock title with pride, Sonar Shock might feel archaic but it uses its limited controls and retro style to evoke a sense of fear and dread that is right up there with the best of horror titles. To say I'm both surprised by how good this is and not surprised by how much I enjoyed it should tell you a lot about what types of games I enjoy. Needless to say, if you're craving more in-sim goodness after the horribly depressing news of Arcane Austin's closure, RIP Dishonored and Prey, your first stop should be here. As with my recent review for Dragon Ruins, I was put onto Sonar Shock by Nukeblood CEO Dave Oshry. The man is a living, breathing billboard for interesting indie titles, and I don't think I'll ever run out of games to play by following him. After his tweet, I had intended to play Sonar Shock, but was trying to line up some other opportunities that didn't pan out. In the meantime, lead developer Raphael Bosniak popped up in my inbox with a code for the game, and I was off to the races. I'll never say no to a classic immersive sim. While there is a rather in-depth and intriguing story at the core of Sonar Shock, I was actually drawn into it for its theming. Set aboard a Russian submarine at the height of the Soviet Union, players will assume the role of an unnamed crewmate as he attempts to discover what is causing the sub to malfunction and how so many members of the crew have gone missing. Along the way, you'll uncover horrors beyond imagination with creatures inspired by both Lovecraftian novels and Slavic folklore. Some of this can be compared to Atomic Heart from last year, which was another Bioshock-inspired shooter that completely misunderstood the assignment. That game certainly had style, but its design went for an open-world approach that was at odds with the customizable skills that were given to players. Conversely, Sonar Shock truly feels like an indie remake of the original System Shock in that it not only takes place entirely within one location, but has players going back and forth between different levels of its submarine to make progress. It does miss out on an overarching antagonistic force, however. Right off the bat, you'll likely be utterly confused by the control scheme. While Sonar Shock is not as obtuse as the 1994 iteration of System Shock, Night Dive's Enhanced Edition Remaster totally overhauled the game to actually make it playable, it does take inspiration from it. There is no strafing at all, and you will not be able to even look up and down. You are, basically, a walking tank, and you'll need to click on pretty much everything to figure out how things work. While you will always have access to your weapons when navigating submenus, you will need to not only click on items in the environment to pick them up, but open a submenu to find the item, and then click another button to use it. Even guns are very deliberately designed, with an icon on your HUD indicating which gun you have equipped, what mode it is operating in, where its clip will go, and a manipulatable slide for when you're reloading ammo. It's a tremendous amount of information to take up front. Once you come to grips with everything, which might be after a death or two, Sonar Shock starts to click. This game might be inspired by the original System Shock, but it actually does a better job at guiding players through its decrepit base than the often obtuse instructions that Shodan would hand out to players. You have access to a mission log that gives you reliable information about where you need to go, and while side missions may only hint at their general location, nothing feels beyond comprehension. It helps that Sonar Shock's world is not incredibly massive, with traversal through each floor taking only about an hour upon first visit. You will backtrack a bit, but helpful shortcuts mitigate the monotony. Where things come alive is with regards to the atmosphere and one very crucial difficulty option. We'll get more into the artistic design in a bit, but Sonar Shock works with a Resident Evil styled save system. You won't need to find typewriters to save, but on its default difficulty option, players will need to find save disks to save their progress. These are limited in quantity, and while I happen to find a solid number of them, you will often go periods of 20 or so minutes where you haven't saved your game. 
This makes combat encounters tense as hell and lends extra weight to the sense of dread around each corner. If you don't like this idea though, an option to grant unlimited saves is available. Even without that mechanic, the design of Sonar Shock's world is what will keep you invested. I didn't even really pay attention to the story, which features some Lovecraftian turns that you would expect, and I was sucked in. A low humming soundtrack makes you feel constantly uneasy, and the limited draw distance mixed with a dark color palette has Sonar Shock dripping with atmosphere at every corner. With bodies scattered about, in each battle draining a good chunk of your resources if you're uncareful, Sonar Shock might feel insurmountable to many. It's not all gloom and doom, though. The sense of humor in the writing is charming, and while a lot of the characters don't necessarily have depth to them, a repeated storyline with a Sherlock Holmes wannabe gives you extra reason to explore each level for any secrets it might be hiding. That's where the MSIM qualities are at their best in this game. If you know anything about old school MSIMs, you'll know that they typically gave you RPG skill trees to customize your character for the exact playstyle you wanted. Sonar Shock is maybe not as diverse as the classics, but its skills all feel as if they have a tangible impact on your play experience. I decided to invest my skill points in hacking, strength, and heavy weapons, so I was able to unlock otherwise inaccessible doors and use incredibly powerful firearms to dispatch my foes. Gunplay isn't like modern FPS titles, where you'll always be shooting at the center of the screen, but much like the OG System Shock. Wherever your cursor lies is where your bullets will go. On top of all of this is a sanity meter that plays into the game's abstract horror elements. You can opt for psionic powers that act similarly to Bioshock's plasmids, and those will drain your sanity upon use. Seeing certain monsters will also make this meter drop, which can lead to some bizarre on-screen effects. To restore sanity, you can either select a perk at the beginning of the game that allows you to pray at shrines, or you'll need to sacrifice some HP by smoking. It's a clever trade-off that adds a lot of risk-reward to the purely psionic playstyle, though I've never been particularly great at that balancing act. Either way, psionic powers are interesting, though I do feel a bit underbalanced with regards to power. It's often far easier to punch someone to death than it is to try and make them spontaneously combust. When your character inevitably starts to lose their mind, Sonar Shock has one last wrinkle up its sleeve that made me grin with glee. Everyone remembers the perennial GameCube classic Eternal Darkness for its creative sanity effects that would see your character randomly dying or your console restarting. Sonar Shock replicates this in ways that feel specific to Steam and Windows. I won't say much else, but... Really, the only thing that will stop you from enjoying this game is whether or not you can accept its deliberate design choices. This next comment will be no shade to people that grew up with modern games, but a lot of newer titles do everything in their power to empower the player. Games practically hand you the world and will increasingly get easier until you're steamrolling the final boss. Sonar Shock does the opposite in that your skills give you a clear advantage in certain scenarios, but will need to be thoroughly understood to see you reach the game's conclusion. If you fight with the design philosophy here, you won't enjoy what Sonar Shock offers. For me, I've always been a fan of playing against limitations, as I feel like that makes for interesting design. Old school games sold a power fantasy, but it was one that players needed to earn. Doom is easy to 90s kids because we've played it for the past 30 years, but it thoroughly annihilated us back in the day. Once we did conquer it, it became a lifelong obsession as it felt like we had scaled Mount Everest. Think of Sonar Shock like that. My first session of Sonar Shock saw me make some progress and even eventually find a save disc, but then I went for a period of about 30 minutes and was utterly devoured by some bizarre blob monster. I felt defeated and stopped for the night. The next day, I was determined to best that monster, and I wound up finishing the game in that second session. I was glued, and while I never lost that sense of paranoia that limited saves can offer, I knew how to work around some of the game's quirks. All of this praise isn't to say that Sonar Shock is impeccable. There are some performance issues with the Godot game engine, where assets won't load in, or the player will get stuck on the environment. The game can also be a bit janky, though even Dave's X exhibits some form of jankiness. Still, a lot of this is tolerable, and the game was even updated the second day I played it. A few issues have been ironed out since its release. Even with those problems, I feel as if Sonar Shock is going to be the sleeper hit of 2024. It's a welcome throwback to classic immersive sims that understands what made them so compelling while offering its own unique take on them. Not everything is perfect, but if you miss the glory days of PC gaming and want to experience more of that goodness, Sonar Shock should be where you direct your attention. Mm -hmm.